Good morning, everybody. I'll quickly play one video and then uh, uh, over to Sanjay sir, all right? Thank you so much, everybody, for watching the video. Over to you, Anju, ma'am. Hi, welcome back to you all for third day session of AICTE and ISD approved short term training program on OBE and NBA. I'm Dr. Anju Arya. IQC Director and Dean R&D of Sri L.R. Tiwari College of Engineering. Very lovely morning to all of you. So before we start the session, I would like to express my deep gratitude to our Chairman of Rahul Education Society, Sri Lalan Tiwari Ji, President, Mrs. Uh, Kanti Devi Ji, Respected Secretary, Mr. Rahul Tiwari, Respected Joint Secretary, Mrs. Krishna Tiwari, and our respected principal, Dr. S. Ram Reddy, for their generous support. Friends, in the era of student-centric education system, we all are facing uh, uh, challenges to get the maximum out output from our effort. That's why we have invited learned, influential, passionate, and empathetic Dr. Sanjay Bokare. He is the principal of Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Technology, Mumbai. I would like to introduce him. He graduated in production engineering, master's in manufacturing technology, and PhD in production engineering from BJTI. He is member of board of studies for mechanical engineering in Mumbai University. Executive member of National Council of Indian Institute of Industrial Engineering and Chairman of Mumbai Chapter. He is editor of the monthly newsletter printed and published by Chapel IE. He is honored by many awards. I would like to mention few. Few of them, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Lifetime Achievement National Award for the remarkable achievement in the field of teaching. Triple I Chairman Special Award. He has more than 30 publications in national and international journal and conferences. He has expertise in different areas like industry four technologies, global supply chain, reverse logistic, operation management, and advanced manufacturing system, etc. I welcome Dr. Sanjay Bakare for the session on outcome based. Uh, education and post-COVID pandemic. 
So before that, again, I would like to remind you all, please mark your attendance as per our guidelines, yes, submit your feedback and quiz. And for the question answer round, you can uh, put your question in the live chat or you may join Zoom meeting where the ID has been shared in Telegram group. Let's welcome Dr. Sanjay Bukhar. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, good morning, all of you, all those who are in, on this virtual dais, as well as uh, those who are out of this virtual dais. They are joining from uh, the Zoom platforms or the YouTube uh, streaming mode. Good morning to one and all for joining this session. And I thank uh, for this invitation uh, to the management of Rahul Education Trust, the LRT RG College of Engineering, for inviting me to deliver a lecture on the occasion of this faculty development program and to share my views about the outcome based education. I think it has been, it, it is the third day of your FDP, and there must have been some very good discussions so far on this topic. And let me join a few of the things which are up to my mind uh, in this similar context. <clears throat> it has been now almost a decade that the institutions are, uh, educational institutions has been proactively involved in the process of accreditation. And this is invav invariably helping the institutes to improve its quality standards. The whole crux of the accreditation is to deliver the outcome-based education. The accreditation authorities has given certain guidelines for the same so that we can align ourselves to achieve them. Additionally, certain useful tools, predominantly like, like Bloom Taxonomy, helps us largely in doing it. So from this point of view, I would like to now have my presentation shared so I request your technical team to please uh, help me in sharing my screen. Oh, yes, sir. The access is granted. Go ahead, sir. Oh, uh, yeah. My screen is ready. Yeah. Is it properly visible to yes, the audience? Yes, Yes, can someone give me feedback that the screen is visible? Not yet, sir. It takes little time. I hope it will. From my side, I have. Just a minute. I think it must be visible now. Yes, sir. So you can put it on full screen. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm trying. Huh. Yes, sir. Perfect, Is it sir. now? Perfect. You can put it on full screen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you, sir. So outcome-based education, let us speak on this and uh, let us try to find out what could be the best practices in the coming days so that we all reach to fantastic quality standards post this COVID pandemic. So my uh, talk would contain some introductory part uh, about this outcome-based education. I would highlight certain accreditation perspective over it. Further, I would uh, speak on the course objectives and course outcomes. I would speak on how learning outcomes can be drafted on your department level. Then there will be certain discussions on uh, COPO mapping and their attainment. Furthermore, I would uh, take you, my I would take the discussion on framing the goal statements, <clears throat> which would be out of the result of finding out how much is the mission or the vision uh, that has been achieved from uh, for that undergraduate program. And at the last, we would see certain best practices which will help us to deliver the outcome-based education. So the whole concept of outcome-based education is actually a brainchild that way, if you say, of the 
accreditation process in that way we have we are, we are aligning our system that we achieve the outcome and we which is a measurable one and we can uh, figure out that there is a gap at certain area and over the period of time we will have this gap rectified so uh, let us begin with the present, with the discussion so if uh, if you look at the accreditation as a whole the activity of accreditation as a whole uh, you would see some four important dimensions of it you would see some four important dimensions of it what are those four important dimensions when any educational institution plans to go for accreditation whether it is nba accreditation or whether it is nic accreditation the four dimensions of it is first first one is the document submission and this document submission is the particular document which that accreditation authority expects from you then you are submitting your self assessment report or uh, the the one which is an official document giving all the details of your from the your of your institution to the nb authority which they will further scrutinize they will visit they will verify the thing and they will give you or they grant you the accreditation to your institution on the second dimension what you see is are the documents at your program level this is one of the very important dimensions when you go for accreditation which is in fact all focused or aligned towards outcome based education so the second important dimension is the documents at your program level you have to understand I mean, we all have to understand one thing that we are submitting something to the nb authorities or nac authorities and we in this similar way we should have all the documents properly preserved at our department level for that specific program so that whatever whatever was the submitted can any time be produced to them so the institutions must be very careful about this the documents submitted and all those kind of evidence evidences of the documents are properly available at your place so that your defense at the time of the visit becomes very easy because when you face the defense of mba in the defense in the sense when they pose you questions and you have to show them everything you have to keep them so much readily available with you and uh, so that it take, doesn't take much time because they go very fast and you should also be actively uh, ready for everything there so document submission then document at your program level and then what you have to again ensure is everything which has been described in your sar on your document about infrastructural facilities whatever you have and the resources whatever you have are properly available with you or not you have to rightly enter the things which are available with you at the time they visit they actually check the things like the number of employees or the last uh, res few results or the placement data or um, for that matter the employees uh, present at present and whatever is in, in, in the list given because of certain experiences that they have so you have to be ready with everything properly known to you about all those infrastructural facilities which you have declared there all the resources which you have declared there to be properly proved to them from your side and you mention certain student faculty ratio or you mention certain cadre ratio so you should have right right kind of documentation to prove everything and the fourth important and very important dimension of the accreditation is the teaching learning process which the authorities expect that they should be outcome based they should be outcome based so teaching learning process and the documentation related with it should also be readily available should also be so nicely made that you prove to the authorities that these this was all our teaching learning process these were all our goals these were all the pro, these are all the program outcomes and this way we have moved and this way we have attained the outcomes and this is now the gap what we see and these are our goal statements in future and thus we are going to have our vision achieved so these are the four very very important dimensions of Uh, accreditation process so we are going to focus on more on what the teaching learning methodology should be and how could we achieve this outcome based education in general so uh, 
this concept of outcome based education if we are speaking on it there while we are talking on this outcome based education hmm. so what we see here if, if someone poses a ask a question what is this outcome based education so we have to understand that this is basically a, a, a educational theory and what is proposes it proposes that each part in the education system must result into learning and this learning must be specific and it should also be measurable so our process is something like this you have at the first place the students then the process of teaching learning and then you should see the student with certain goals which you have framed have been achieved from his side so student after going through the process of teaching learning should have achieved goal number 1 goal number 2 goal number 3 and so on so outcomes are achieved are to be ensured by us through the process of teaching learning and that is the whole you can say the process of outcome based education now here uh, there could be a question coming to someone's mind that uh, uh, do you mean to say that there uh, the traditional way of teaching learning which happened to be there since ages never had any kind of concept of this kind whether there were outcomes coming or not so it's not like that education within itself of course have all those outcomes education within itself has got all those outcomes but it is just the the pedagogy now we have to imbibe within ourselves and we have we will be figuring out actually how much is been attained from our side which is in the form of the outcome traditionally otherwise we were going in a way that we are delivering something and students receiving the things from us in that way and finally it was just some kind of data based transfer from one side to the another side but we we probably were not so much keen on finding out whether specific kind of expectations which are there from education have been achieved by the student or not so this is where the pedagogical aspects come into picture and you are now uh, you know learning that kind of act of teaching which will give you which will uh, which will help you in finding out whether the outcomes have been achieved or not okay if we just look at what is uh, the traditional way of teaching and what is this outcome based teaching and just try to find out what are those minor or marginal differences there but are of significant importance so traditionally whatever we were teaching was more of content based teaching i have to teach something which is the chapter let us say of motion and i have to teach some laws of motion so i am just going to teach the students what is the first law second law third law of the motion and that the content was delivered in outcome based education the similar thing is been taught but then i will keep an objective in my mind that when i teach the student the laws of motion my objective is that student will at least know what is the static state of a body a student will know what is the momentum and how does it impact on uh, in the motion and furthermore i may in this objective based teaching my objective would also be student would know about what is an action force and what is a reaction force so my objectives are as minimum as possible and then i will deliver the content right and then further try to figure out that whether the objectives which were set by me are now delivered properly to them so that the expected outcome from their side are seen properly there in traditional way of teaching it was the focus to transmit the knowledge and understanding of ideas and values to the student however in outcome based teaching the focus is on objective based teaching you have certain objectives made and you are transferring these objectives to the student where you see that student gains certain outcome out of it there comes some kind of outcome out out of it we are going to have some more discussion on the on this thing uh, in the slides ahead 
if you uh, look at the learning how does learning takes place in traditional way and how does the learning takes place in outcome based education then learning you would see that in traditional way we are anticipating how much is understood by the student and in outcome based education if you look at the whole thing our learning is going to be assessed on the basis of what how much is the outcome that has been achieved by the student so this is the basic difference between what is the traditional learning or what is the learning that is uh, that is the uh, the education that is the outcome based education so there is a marginal difference but it makes a significant impact on the uh, teaching learning process we just have to identify out of the education system how do we have our pedagogy align so that we go more from the perspective of the outcome based education now when we are talking so much about the outcome based education we have to figure out what exactly are the outcomes which we are looking for so nba has given a great has made uh, in the form of a help to all of us that nba has given a very specific kind of 12 outcomes from their side so nba expects that a graduate or a graduate there should be these 12 important things which should be seen significantly into them the a uh, student coming out of your institution as a graduate must have significant amount of engineering knowledge he should be able to analyze the problem properly and further he should be able to design or develop the solutions for the same he should be able to conduct investigations if there is a problem he should be able to conduct the investigations over the complex pro problems and thereby proposing the solutions to it he should be the one who should be able to use the modern tools he should be able to use the modern tools so he, these are the graduate outcomes and if you if we uh, look at this whole thing the modern tools you know the graduate of today may not be aware of what could be possibly the tools after 10 years so he has to keep his skill set always ready that he will learn the modern tools and he will use it so he is being trained today to use something which is available today but his mindset or his ability should be so that he keeps himself upgrading so that he use the modern tools somewhere if i i recollect the things when i graduated at least there were there were no any significant computer facilities for the mechanical engineering students we I, in fact i never touched a computer when i was getting graduated so never knew about how a powerpoint presentation can be given or how i can online deliver my lecture or how i can write a, a, a letter in the ms word it was not known but in the coming days when the new tools and technologies came i i am supposed to keep myself upgraded in such a way that i go on accepting those technologies learning those technologies and using them that is the that is the major perspective towards this concept of outcome that is modern tool usage and this is something very very important that he should know he is an engineer and he, and he lives in a society and what are his responsibilities towards the society as an engineer he should be well conversant with the environment as environmental aspects and the sustainability because he is the one who is going to design the things manufacture the things bring it for the use of the people so it should not be something which is harming the nation at the cost of something which is pro which is a technological solution so it, it is becoming very alarming these days where the environment and the sustainability issues were not so much thought earlier and we are uh, witnessing the global warming global warming and the things like that so this is specified as an outcome by the nba there after if you see somewhere as an outcome is the ethics which is also very very high important so our uh, curriculum has got those contents which which will uh, help the students to uh, have the ethical values known and for that matter for achieving these kind of outcomes the institutions has to make their own contributions design something for that which may be from many different uh, kind of modes it now it should not be necessarily always that it will be through the, the classroom teaching learning but it may come from some extra curriculars or co curriculars or the professional body activities <laughs>
then one of the major outcome is about uh, individual and the team work you graduate should be in a position that he works individually he should be able to work individually also and he should be working with properly working with a team also he should be good at communication he should be having significant knowledge of project management and finance and he should be the one who is aspirant of learning in the coming days so these are the 12 outcomes which nba has given to all of us and if you try to research over these all 12 outcomes you will find it very difficult that nba has actually left something there is something which is not been attended by nba in the form of outcome which was supposed to be proposed so there are these 12 important outcomes which nba has given and further nba has uh, uh, nba has further suggested that since it is your own undergraduate program and nba expects these 12 outcomes but nba has given you a liberty that since it is your own undergraduate program you can figure out couple of specific outcomes by yourself which will be your program specific outcomes so one or two or maybe three maximum can be the outcome which you can devise on your own Uh, on ug level that our undergraduate will further more have these two things but when you are going to really find it out what two things or one thing which is uh, from coming out of your program you will find that there has been everything brought in place but then specifically from your program you can work on it and you can uh, um, figure out something which is exceptionally from your side hmm so that is about the program outcomes the important program outcomes uh, and the program specific outcomes so achievement of all of this 12 is what is the outcome based education so your course curriculum your various courses the the syllabus within it then uh, then the, the the project work because you know if you look at the thing and uh, you try to say work on uh, mapping the program outcomes with your course outcomes then it is not necessary that a course one single course is going to make all 12 outcomes mapped there may be some 3 4 mapped by one or there may be 3 4 5 6 mapped by some other course so it is not the one course which is going to map all 12 you will you will have to find out through your direct attainment levels and your indirect attainment levels whether all the outcomes are being touched or not something exceptionally if you see the final year project work is the one which i feel if you look at the rubrics if if you can make a rubrics of it you will find that final year project touches maximum of the outcomes so very in a very uh, you know uh, through a research way or you all sit together at your undergraduate uh, faculty of the undergraduate program and think about the project and what are the outcomes of, of the project then you can make a wonderful rubrics and you can really see that the maximum mapping is uh, possible there through the project work and then you have uh, co curricular activities you have extra curricular activities you have sports you have uh, student professional bodies like mesa or sa or ishre or asne and then there are the activities they do work in a group they are working in a team uh, there comes little ethical aspects within it also they are working individually also they are in a team also they go and speak with the with the uh, sometime with the sponsor or so sometime with the authorities so uh, a mode of communication can also be just they take up a project in fact to do something and they complete the project so and there is a financial aspect involved with it so through those kind of activities which comes from the student professional bodies it again helps in a significant way to achieve these all outcomes so they are also to be properly seen in this process of uh, mapping now if outcome based education and the accreditation in a complete perspective you have to figure out then you would see that at the core is your vision at the core is your vision and to achieve your vision rather to embark on the vision on that journey what you do is you set some mission statement that if this is your vision then 
the mission statements are like this to achieve the to achieve this vision you have planned that this would be my mission number 1 this would be our mission number 2 our institute will have this as a third mission fourth fifth sixth you would have missions made missions planned mission statements made rather so that you achieve your vision your vision could be something your undergraduates would be uh, a, a technocrat of the ability that they can work anywhere in the global platform you mm-hmm. would uh, uh, say that you are your technocrats or your under, your graduates will be uh, skillfully very competent everywhere there would be would be a successful managers of today so for achieving those for achieving that vision you have certain set certain vision certain mission statement you have set certain mission which you have framed in the form of the mission statement you are probably saying that your mission is to uh, have uh, you know the research activities promoted at your place your mission could be to provide the a good teaching experience to the student your mission could be uh, something like associating with the with the top kind of research institutions uh, in the vicinity of your area your mission could be furthermore that you are going to upgrade your laboratories to a, a great state of art you can say so you set your mission statement so that your vision is achieved now your mission statements are all those all those statements which are going to be accomplished because of certain outcomes so if you have your program outcomes achieved you can say that because these many number of programs outcome which were aligning to specific mission have achieved you can say that your mission has been accomplished or you can say that the mission is partly done partly still to be done so you have to figure out whatever were your mission statements are they being achieved when you are going to figure out what is what are the program educational objectives and the program outcomes and their attainment levels or the achievement levels being examined so when you see that the uh, the the various aspects of program outcomes are been achieved you can make a qualitative analysis of it and say that your mission is done and then it is again not a story that your mission is done so mission statement is now deleted because you will always keep on setting the newer and newer missions that you are make your institution is on the journey of making itself to one of the best center of excellence you can say or you are moving from an affiliated college to an autonomous and autonomous to uh, further going uh, moving ahead right up to some uh, private university also so mission vision is something which i believe is not an achievable aspect because when you look when you make certain vision and you reach to some level you we, your limits of vision again goes of increasing and subsequently your mission statement goes on getting revised and as as they go on getting revised newer and newer quality dimensions come into picture so at one point of time when you are looking at your mission statements you have to see that your program outcomes are achieved your objectives of the educational objectives are achieved so ultimately that is going to have some or other mission accomplished so thus you have to align your objectives your outcomes in that way and to figure out whether your program outcomes are achieved you have to see that within the program are all the courses and for all the courses there are certain objectives and for all the courses there are certain outcomes so you will have to do the mapping of outcomes course outcomes with the program outcome and lastly then find out whether the mapping has been done and the uh, the outcomes has been attained or not so at the core is the mission uh, vision then is the mission then are the objectives and outcomes of the undergraduate program and then there are the course objectives and the course outcome now le- let us have some uh, uh, minute uh, discussion or some uh, the more clarity over what the objectives and outcomes are so if we if we uh, look at this course objectives what course objective contain it contains three important dimensions here number one is the teaching during the objective there is something that is teaching to fulfill the objective there is a teaching and who is involved in it teacher is involved in it and what teachers have what what teacher is having with him is the objective so teaching 
teacher and the objective makes the course objective whereas course outcome you look at the course outcome what do you have there there is a learning and learning is to the student and students learning results into some kind of outcome so course objective has got teaching teacher and objective and course outcome has got learning student and the outcome and now if you again look at this two aspects of course objectives and course outcomes what you will see that the course objectives are purely teacher centric they are all for the teacher objective is the teacher's objective objective is the teacher's objective it is a teacher centric and outcome is completely student centric outcomes are all to be seen from the students point of view and it should never happen that you are going to see what are the outcomes of the teacher he is just uh, he is to be seen that way he is making his mind ready for what this is what minimum i am expecting to happen from my side he sets an objective which is at certain minimum level my objective is at a minimum level that i just want to make the student aware about the laws of motion the static nature of a body what is a momentum right these are my these are the teachers objectives in terms of outcome what student can gain out of it may be something which is limitless also which can be far ahead of what teacher has his objective but teacher would deliver the fundamental thing to him which is at a basic level and as an outcome it can result into a significant amount of possibility so going ahead there some more clarity again i want to bring through a, a typical example of objectives and outcomes uh, i've taken an example of uh, just to check the things that am i properly audible sir anyone can give me feedback on it am i audible to you hello 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 am i audible sir i just want to check am i audible properly yeah, yes sir you are audible okay thank you so much i just want to do i have feedback otherwise i'll go on speaking and there is no audio from my side so thank you so much sir i'll continue with my presentation uh so this is uh, a typical example of one of the course of mechanical engineering that is kinematics of machinery and uh, for this course uh, for this course there are certain objectives and certain outcomes which has come uh, to the teacher from the university side from the university side now look at here if if just i have to take you uh, one more time back now let it let it be let it go ahead. so the syllabus copy will have this uh, subject details of syllabus of this subject and you will find on the top that these are the objectives of the of this particular subject and these are the outcomes of this particular subject so objectives and outcomes are in fact delivered to you through the university syllabus right and it is the responsibility of the department first of all that whatever is it has been suggested in the preamble of the dean which comes it comes with the syllabus copy the, in the preamble of the dean and also the preamble of the chairman board of studies that uh, for the courses you all can further go ahead and set some more objectives and set some more outcomes from your side because finally it is the teacher who is going to teach it it is the teacher who is expecting certain outcomes from his side so from university side it comes to you to this uh, this this extent and you can further add it at at your level something more than that we are going to see what could be a good methodology good could good, good method of uh, making the objectives and making additional outcomes in the coming slides so at present for this subject if you look at the objectives you, know, you ob the objectives for kinematics of machinery which are prescribed in the syllabus was like to acquaint with the basic concept of kinematics and kinetics of machine elements very very basic level of thing it is expected the teacher is expecting that he just is going to make them acquaint with the basic concepts of kinematics what is kinematics what do you mean by a link or what do you mean by a pair or what do you mean by a mechanism or what do you mean by kinetics 
are all those basic things which teacher is expecting is making his objective that i would at least give this uh, my objective is to at least deliver this thing to them and then further to familiarize with the various basic mechanisms and inversion the teacher is feeling that he should make them familiar with the basic mechanisms and the inversions and furthermore the objectives which is with the teacher is that to, to study the basic power transmission thing he wish that his students uh, he will make the students aware about some basics of the power transmission so this is completely the teacher centric aspect if you look at this it is completely the teacher centric aspect if you look at the outcomes which has been given by the university for this subject the outcomes are like this the learner will be able to first of all it is all if you will always find that the learner will be able to what what he will be able to he will be able to define the various components of the mechanism right it is an outcome that if for in the coming days then the same learner he looks at some mechanism he should be able to define that this is the crank shaft this is the crank wheel this is the connecting rod this is the skull slider he should be able to define all of them is basic thing it is just basic basic thing of it in the next outcome what is expected is that he will be able to develop or provide a specific motion he will be able to develop a specific motion to provide a specific motion and further the outcome is that he will be able to draw some velocity and acceleration diagrams for uh, of the various mechanism now the outcome the level of the outcome is little more increasing he is able to draw the velocity and acceleration diagram for the various mechanisms and if you look at again the outcomes ahead he will be able to draw the cam profile for the specific follower motion thereafter if you see the outcome is analyze the forces into various gears and thereafter you see that there is he he will be the learner will be able to select the appropriate power transmission for the specific application right all the outcomes are all the outcomes are student centric hmm. all the outcomes are student centric all the objectives are teacher centric now we have to further look at something that is uh, very important here what is that the very important tool these days which which helps you in uh, uh, having the outcome based ed uh, education achieved is the bloom's taxonomy and uh, uh, the discussion so far which has been happened in your faculty development program you already have gone through the bloom's taxonomy something that is very basic about bloom's taxonomy is that the cognitive domain which is of very predominant importance for the learner Uh, there the bloom has told you some important level of uh, learning and this important level of learning if look at them the basic level is the knowledge level the the bottom most level is the knowledge level then on above above the knowledge level level is the understand level above the understand level is the apply level above the apply level is the analyze level above the analyze level is the evaluate level and above the evaluate level is the create level right this way the learning happens learning happens step by step in this way in the cognitive domain now when we are dealing with certain course we have to see that whether the students are actually aligned in this way that his learning is happening step by step in this way so it is always not necessary it is not necessary that your course and your teaching should completely be aligned in such a way that you are trying to make your student only creative you are expecting them they should be just creative forgetting you are forgetting there that you are not trying to make him understand or make him knowledgeable you are putting onto the practice on some research research will only happen when you have given the fundamental learnings of about the theory of the subject and the uh, theory and the practical the various practices of it so it is very important that for a subject it should be smart it should be properly designed outcome where student is arising making himself enter into the domain of outcome step by step from 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 some understand level from some uh, knowledge level and then the understand level then 
the apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. So if you look at these outcomes, if you look at the outcomes which are on the screen right now, you can see you know, when the first outcome, define the various components of the mechanism, isn't it? So when someone is able to define the components of a mechanism, now when you ask, if you ask someone that you uh, define uh, inversion, you know, define, how do you define inversion? And he simply says that it is a process of making one link fixed in turn and you are going to get different mechanisms in turn. So it is a simple definition which he has produced in front of you now. He gave it to you right now. So you can say that he is fine with the knowledge level. He has got the knowledge of what is meaning of the inversion. Or you simply ask him what is the link and he says that it's a resistant body with negligible um, deformation being taking place. So you can say that yeah, he has got significant knowledge of the uh, of the things there for the for the subject matter there, but now you can further you cannot anticipate that this knowledge level is enough. Knowledge level is enough to be for the sake of learning. You have to actually test the student whether he has uh, he has on, on the knowledge level and all levels above it as per the Bloom's taxonomy, isn't it? You would find uh, some examination papers in the olden days also, many examination papers. The whole paper is, right, you know, define this thing, explain this thing, write short notes. This has not got so much of stand from the examination part. Of it. You are just checking the knowledge level. Not even many times you are checking the understand level. So you are, your question paper should also be framed in a such a way that you are testing the student on the knowledge level, the application level, analysis level. So the first outcomes you see just uh, identifying the student or testing the student at their knowledge level. When you ask them to develop mechanism to provide specific mo motion, when you are asking them to develop a mechanism and you tell them that you want to have rotary motion converted into reciprocatory motion. You've asked this, now student has got knowledge of mechanisms and you have you are expecting him that he is going to now explain to you how a rotary motion can be converted into a reciprocatory motion. So he will put his knowledge there and he will have rotary motion converted into reciprocatory motion through certain linkages. Fine, very good. He has understood the things. He has understood the things. But does the story end there? No, the story doesn't end there. If you can see the outcome there, furthermore, the outcome says that draw the velocity and acceleration diagram of the various components. Now you are actually trying to identify the student and his at his application level that velocity and the acceleration, the important components when you are going to uh, make the mechanisms and thus uh, you are going to, you are asking him, asking the student that this is what the dimensions are and this is what the mechanism is. You, you figure out what is the velocity, what is the acceleration. So you, he's going into the application part of it. Now further analysis part of it or the evaluation part of it or the create part of it can further be evaluated. Similarly, if you look at the outcomes ahead of them, he's being asked to draw the cam profile for specific motion because now he is going to analyze the motion and is typically going to design a cam which cam, where the cam has got an application where it, it will transmit the motion, which is on the basis of certain timeline. Uh, you want a motion for some time, you want motion, uh, you do not want an active motion for some time. So your cam can help you in that. So analysis, uh, 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 the application part and analysis part is getting uh, achieved there. Further, the outcome says that he will, the learner will be able to analyze the forces in the various gears. So this is the another level of the blooms where the student is expected to analyze the various forces. And uh, above that, he again is going to, you know, select the appropriate power transmission. In the last outcome, if you see, select, select the appropriate, so he's going to evaluate, you to actually see various different mechanisms, how they can help and he can further figure out which will be the most optimal one. And thereafter, through his some through his own uh, intellect, he can further have some naturalization achieved within it when he understands the things. He can always go and create something which is of very high importance in the field of engineering. So if outcomes, if outcomes and objectives are to be seen, 
from the student centric point of view as outcome and teacher centric point of view in the uh, as the objectives and look at the outcomes you have you can get an understanding about outcomes are been designed in such a way that the bloom's taxonomy is properly addressed and this is what is to be applied by a faculty also when he is taking the tests oral presentation or some mini project or certain major project by the student so this is the way you are going to apply that bloom's taxonomy in the field of the academics so you can see that objectives are all those efforts which a teacher is putting and outcomes are all those possibilities which are likely to happen a student can go to a very high extent and can design some great mechanisms also or moreover whatever the mechanisms might have come they have come the great mechanisms like see the earlier the steam engine of steam engine mechanism of earlier days or the beam engine or the pendulum pump um or many different you know ackerman steering gear mechanism or davis steering gear mechanism theosida straight line generating mechanism hart's mechanism all of them are such a wonderful uh, you know inventions by them you know by they have designed this through their creative mind that it becomes very easy for everyone to, for, to be used as a practical application of it you know something basic of mechanism is being taught and the learner now is able to make a me wonderful mechanism uh, helping the, the technology to run something now as i was saying that uh university also or even nb also it recommends the teacher that he should further have some objectives brought from his side and he should further also have certain outcomes also uh put there from his side which he expects so we have to uh, find out we have to learn about how one should write the outcome the learning outcome the learner's outcome or the learning outcome so if you see the nature of any outcome whatever uh, whatever is that learning outcome if you look at the learning outcome it has got three important dimensions again the outcome should be measurable the outcome should be observable and the outcome should be specific these are the three important dimensions of the outcome so the the teacher who is going to make the outcome or the group which is going to make the outcome i am coming in the later stage how you should actually uh, go with the process of making the outcome when the, when the outcome is to be made you see that it's measurable it is specific it is observable measurable because you can it will help you further to figure out the attainment levels of your program outcome specific because you know it must have certain limitations to itself you know outcome you cannot uh, expect an outcome in terms of multi dimension there when you are teaching over a specific thing outcome is for specific thing so it is specific it is measurable and or of course it should be observable also there now a complete process if you are going to see about making a learning outcome the statement which generally will be there for a learning outcome it will have an active verb it will have a verb within it just look at the outcome here no? define various component define is the verb develop mechanism develop is the verb draw velocity draw is the verb draw draw cam profile cam profile is the verb sorry draw is the verb analyze forces analyze is the verb select appropriate pause select is the verb so you are uh, uh, your learning outcome must have the verb there right after the verb your learning outcome must have certain course content out of it so we look at here all of them will have definitely the course content various components of the mechanism mechanism to provide specific motion velocity acceleration diagram cam profile or, or the forces so it will certainly have the course content along with it you again have to see that whether your statement is indicating certain attainment level or not your statement is just a second please give me yeah uh it must uh, signify that it has got certain attainment level so you can say that 
if he is able to draw yeah he he has drawn and he has attained the thing which which was been expected so it must give certain attainment it should should show that they it is attainable it should show that it is attainable and it should have a limitation within itself you are confining him to certain zone that with this much is the possible thing and within this framework your outcome can be seen or measured you know so if you look at them all of them you know define the ways if it defines it is attained if it develop it is attained if it draws it is attained you know in this way all of them are attainable and all of them are further uh, having their limitations that you are expecting that he, he should be able to define define is a limitation he should able to develop that's it he is able to draw that's it he is able to draw or analyze or select the appropriate me mechanism that is uh, enough for a for a outcome to be designed so it should have an active verb it should have course content it should have attainment it should signify that attainment and it also should signify the limitation that these are the these are the things which are been expected there possible to be done from the side of the um, learner so in this way we write a learning outcome now coming to the the further the discussions ahead uh is something where we are now in such a part of the life that we, we we never expected earlier i think in the history there might be a cases where there were pandemics and uh, there were a lot of deaths and lot of uh, uncomfort in the people and uh, still the people came out of it they worked over it and they came out of it and uh, these are days again we are again going through such a phase and all those uh, mechanisms that we have nation wise or world wise are trying to put up their minds to bring something new as a solution to to withstand against or to to come back to this pandemic here when we uh, are going to see about certain best practices or something that should come that is of more a lot of a meaning then we have to definitely train ourselves first of all we have to train ourselves we have to uh, uh, we are supposed to get to know the new things the new concept right so there is a very important quotation which i have seen by alvin toffler what he says that the illiterate of 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write the traditional definition or the traditional the the understanding what we have about the illiterate is one who is uh, not in a position to write his name or he cannot write or he cannot read and he is illiterate right this is what the term we normally expect from but for the 21st century what alvin says is he the illiterate is not the one who cannot read or write but those who will not be in a position to learn unlearn and relearn remember this thing is of very high importance it is of a very high importance and it applies to each and every one and in particular those who want to do something who make certain aims who got certain goals ahead it is to be understood that you are learning something on today you will require to unlearn that thing and you will require again to relearn something there has been scrapping out of technologies there has been scrapping out of many things new things are coming so you have to first of all learn then you have, will have to unlearn all those things and you will have to relearn something is of more importance or valuable from that point of view right so if the if you look at the present days you know some 6 months back if i were to see go back 6 months i think 6 months back uh, was there anyone of you thinking about his taking his uh, lecture or to a virtual class there may be some i don't say there may be someone but i think uh, more or less uh, there won't be people thinking that i'm to deliver my lecture online through at least i never a thought of uh, we are to have an online meeting and what is this zoom and what are these google classrooms and uh, 
making a host and making a co-host and screen sharing. I don't think it was not with me. It, some, it was with someone uh, of you. I kudos to him definitely. But for me, it was not known, and I largely I anticipated largely it was not with the people. But with this short span of time and the pandemic, the slap from the pandemic has made us to learn the things. Now let us see. There's one thing. All the all those technological aspects were in the place, right? Zoom was there. Google Classrooms were there. Online meetings were also possible, but it was never done from our side. It might be there might be certain exceptions for it, but then largely it was not been you utilized there because we were comfortable with the physical modes, physical teaching, learning, students coming and all and all, and it was all good life going on. But we we never went into it. But then the the slap of the pandemic made us to convert ourselves into that. And within no span of time, very very short span of time, ready you can say we learned how we can go online by a Zoom and have a have a gathering of hundred and more and deliver a lecture on on people are these days taking the conference also online. So these whole the whole thing is what we have to unlearn and we have to learn something new, right? So, with this, if we look at what was traditionally being done, it was a lecture. One, no, some the head, the head of the department asked his teacher, asked his colleague that uh, is it, it's your lecture now, and you should go to your lecture, right? And what happens in a lecture? Lecture is a very traditional way, a traditional way of teaching. You go and you deliver your, your lecture. And what is there in this traditional way? I talk, you listen. I will talk, and you will listen to it. Now, of course, there are certain discussions. That's an exception, no doubt. But then, primarily, it is the teacher going into the class and delivering a lecture. Is the lecture? Lecture is what a teacher goes into that, delivers something, and what he delivers is the lecture. And if he gives an opportunity to the student to ask queries. Then there is some interactive session towards the end of the session, and if, if we are welcome all those queries and all, that is great. The great teacher for that matter. But then it is, I will talk and you will listen, and it's very primitive stage. But for a bet for a better learning, if we think, then something the similar model is been implemented along with the use of Bloom's taxonomy or that kind of model. Then your teaching, when it is applied along with the Bloom's taxonomy, what learning is going to come out is a better learning. <coughs> it will be a better learning experience by the student. Now, the lecture, the course, the outcomes, the learning outcomes that we have seen. Uh, now, if now I wish to move ahead further for in the process of where we are going to have our attainment level investigated, you know, calculated for that matter, or for that matter, uh, to figure out how much we have attained. So for that, we move to the mapping and attainment process. Now, what is being mapped and what is being attained that we have to see? We are having course objectives, right? We are having course outcomes. Let's now objective is definitely which is one is which is to be attained, no doubt. The objective is achieved, rather you can say. Uh, he taught to the student, the objective is achieved. It is not necessary that whether the objective is achieved is to be checked or not. You can simply say that uh, I taught you. Have you understood the definition? Yes, the objective is achieved. But uh, so far as the outcome, outcomes we have to bother about the outcomes that we have to figure out how much. Is that outcome attained at the student level? So, course outcome we have, program outcome we have. What we have to do is we have to map the program outcomes with the course outcomes, and then we have to find out how much is the attainment done for the program outcomes and also for the course outcomes. Now, this whole thing moves in this way. No, you have got certain direct tools of assessment. You have got certain indirect tools of assessment. You have to put the direct tools of assessment in the place for your for the calculation of your attainment level. Similarly, you have to put your indirect tools also 
at the place to calculate your attainment level right then what you have to do is you have to do copo mapping that is mapping of course outcomes to the program outcomes mapping also of course outcomes with the uh, you also have to map your course outcomes with your direct tools also i'm going to come over it after some time once you have done your mapping then you are going to do the evaluation of it and after you do the evaluation you can reach to a position where you can say that these are our attainment level right so this is the way you go you should have your direct tools known you should have your indirect tools known you should have your mapping done after mapping after you have done the mapping you have given the weightages to it you are going into the process of evaluation of it you will actually see how much is any any specific any kind of outcome being properly mapped and further attained and then you can establish the attainment levels there now coming to what this direct tools and what are uh, what is its use let us see direct tools are techniques used to directly measure a student's academic abilities in this subject to know about his academic proficiency in the particular subject for a particular subject you are going to see the ability of the student so in one place what you have you have course outcome right now you are going to see that whether this course outcome has been achieved or not so to understand whether the course outcome has been achieved or not you are going to have direct tools used what are the direct tools you have your tests you have the assignments you have given the students the presentation you have given them the quiz also you can take their oral examination also you further have your semester examinations also all the scores will then tell you that how much has been attained so it was course outcome number 1 where student is expected to define the the various parts in a mechanism right so in a test you have put a question define a four bar chain define the various parts in the four bar chain a simple question and it defines it properly so your outcome number 1 is attained if say you have 10 student 10 students have uh, answered properly you can say the outcome course outcome number 1 is attained right so your test is helping you your assignment is helping you through the presentation also and from all those things you can have whether the course come outcomes have been attained or not similarly uh, this is going to help you to estimate the attainment calculations of your program when you are using all your direct tools to know about the attainment levels you are giving a weightage of 80% of it to know about the attainment levels the final attainment levels which you are going to take up for the program outcome they are 80% of the attainment levels which you have achieved through direct tools are to be considered and when you are thinking of indirect tools indirect tools are the techniques used as an indirect measure for the students learning where you are asking him to give his feedback you are asking sir for certain uh, survey to be filled by him so it is like you are asking stu uh, a student that you have understood the mechanisms and he says yes on the scale i have understood at uh, uh, no on a scale of 5 we understood 4 so you are going to have one more uh, database made by you using this indirect tool that the the outcomes whatever were there have been achieved by the student have been attained by the student because he is saying because he is saying and on a scale of 5 he has mentioned this to this much level so you have two different databases with you one the attainment levels which you have calculated by the use of direct tools one which you have calculated by the use of the indirect tool so you have to give 80% weightage to the direct tools and you have to give 20% weightage to the to the indirect tools and thus you can calculate the attainment level using both these uh, aspects of direct tool and indirect tool to find out the total attainment level <laughs> now uh, here i just want if we have understood up to this much we've gone to this much that direct tools and indirect tools and the 80% and 20% of contribution for the calculation of the attainment levels now uh, what i want to bring uh, in front of you is that 
what are the what are certain practices that can help us in uh, in making the things a bit easy which is mapping which is the uh, outcome part of it so we'll go ahead with this yeah so there are certain helpful practices for that Yeah, so uh, look at this slide. There are certain helpful practices uh, which I have mentioned there. So what should be done on the department level? Mm -hmm. What should be mentioned on the department level? Uh, just a second. Huh? Uh, Riddhi, Arpana. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, there are certain helpful practices which can be uh, taken up on the department level. Uh, What could be done there is you can have a domain group made and uh, this domain group can take certain meetings and this domain group meetings can help in drafting these specific course objectives as the university syllabus or even nba has told that you can figure out some more outcomes some more objectives on your level so could it be uh, just by uh, on the faculty once individual faculty level will it be appropriate or uh, should it be uh, through some different mechanism so something that could be a good practice a best practice here is you can have domain group made and now these domain groups will do what they will draw they will draft the specific objectives course specific objectives and there will be course specific outcomes also and uh, the domain group itself will uh, do the mapping of co to po and also pso those are the program specific outcomes uh, even mapping to them can be done by the uh, by the domain groups and then uh, you can have a project committee also uh, they will carry out the po po mapping for the project why project is so much important because I have told in earlier that project is that one area where maximum of your of your program outcomes are mapped. Right. When you have this domain group and through the meetings of the domain group, you have you have drafted the specific objectives, the specific outcomes. You have done mapping of it. You have also mapped your program specific outcomes. Then also the project committee and the mapping of the project work now once this mapping and everything has been done by this domain group by this domain group you can seek certain advice from someone who is an expert hmm, for that specific domain group and you can take his advice you can have the revision uh, revision done uh, through it and you can do the validation also uh, finally I means you can have a validation that whatever was made by in a way that you are just getting it validated by showing it to someone and he agrees to you and there can be some uh, suggestions from his side and that's what it gets validated uh, and then whatever is now whatever are now the specific objectives or the specific outcomes or the mapping that has been done by the domain group everything can be freezed as at this point of time 
and once it is freezed the faculty member who carries his academic diary or a record in which he is mentioning everything about his subject in that academic diary he it will he it will all be reflected there that for the course which he is teaching this is what are the what is the mapping process and this is what uh, are the additional objectives made or these are the our additional outcomes made now what my intention telling you here is that that it should not be left on that individual teacher to write an outcome or to write an objective as an individual because finally your attainment level calculations are getting done on your department level right the whole department is in the process of calculating the attainment level right so it would be and then there can be sometimes someone uh, adds an outcome and uh, an objective and uh, uh, someone then uh, has got some kind of query over it to avoid all this there can be a very helpful practice that can be done that is possible by a domain group what i intend to say here is that you can have you can have something like this as a domain group for mechanical engineering the course groups you have these course you you have you can have various course groups like this mechanical engineering typically has got a domain which is of thermal engineering it has got a domain of design engineering it has got a domain of manufacturing engineering and it also got a domain of management and the social sciences so all those faculty members which who belong to the thermal engineering group will be to this domain group all those who belong to design will be to this group manufacturing to this group and management and social sciences to this group now what they are doing here they are they are conducting certain meetings and through the meeting they are doing they are first of all framing out certain more objectives now it will be the discussion of all of the faculty members so objectives and additional outcomes can be figured out by this domain group the way we have thought of we have uh, we we talked about the learning outcomes in that way the learning outcomes can be written down by these members and uh, then the mapping being done so these domain group will do the mapping and someone who is an expert in this domain group area can be referred when we call sometime can be discussed with if necessary and uh, took his advice and further revise and then we freeze it so uh, this will be the role of the domain group it will help in 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 drafting additional objectives outcomes mapping getting it validated and finally freezing it so mapping process is freezed properly now it has been it has been taken uh, through all the faculty members uh, a consent of all the faculty members over it and now everything is done so you can say now you have done proper copo mapping or direct tools uh, and the indirect tools mapping with the course outcome course outcome mapping with the program outcome now here of, uh, at this stage if you, you, you if this is what a good practice that can be followed up then uh, and these are the domain groups that you have made if Uh, we are going to see now how can we take up a mapping process mapping process at the stage where where a domain group is sitting together and working on the mapping of a course uh, mapping for particular course isn't it i have typically typically taken an example of what uh, the course group the course group for mechanical engineering which belongs to uh, production management and the social sciences and the course name which i have taken is production planning and control those who who are with the background of mechanical engineering must be knowing it properly and then the course code something which is there as per the university syllabus as mentioned is here and the mapping process like this the course has got four outcomes as per the syllabus given by the university there here for an for the sample or the example i have i have not i have not taken any additional outcome which is further planned but whatever outcomes are there given by university and further you have added through your domain group has added to it it can be put in place like this the course outcome for this subject number 1 is to illustrate the production planning functions and make the manufacturing functions in a better way outcome number 2 develop competency in scheduling and sequencing in the manufacturing operations Uh, and uh, effect a durable manufacturing lead time outcome number 3 is manage and control the inventory with the cost effectiveness 
and outcome number 4 is get conversant with the various document procedures uh, procedural aspects and preparation of the orders for various manufacturing methods so if these are the outcome if these are the outcomes i am going to put these outcomes on the rows in this rubric and i am going to put all the program outcomes on the columns in the rubric now what my domain group is going to do my domain group is going to map this thing now course outcome number 1 illustrate the production planning and manage uh, manufacturing or functions in a better way so there can be this program uh, outcome number 3 which talks about the uh, analysis of the complex problem and suggesting the solutions over it yeah then i can say that course outcome number 1 is mapping to the program outcome what is expected in program outcome number 3 is getting delivered through the course outcome number 1 then for example if there is something which is of a nature manage and control the inventory so here comes two important thing manage and control he is dealing with the time management right and also the financial part of it so the program outcome number uh, 11 which speaks about the pro uh, project management and the financial management gets mapped out of the course outcome number 3 these tasks these mapping which has been there has been done randomly it is not with any specific significance what i wanted to tell you is that the mapping can be done looking at your course outcome and the nature of the program outcome you can just put a mark here that this has been mapped out of this outcome and thus you can do this mapping you can complete this mapping process after you complete this mapping process your domain group itself can also put certain remarks in terms of strength of the mapping that this is very strongly uh, you know mapping this one or this is moderately or this is uh, loosely mapping or this is just mapping just on what two or three levels you can have popo mapping strength being mentioned there as uh, uh, strongly mapping or good mapping or fair little or it is weakly mapping something like that you can uh, you can put it you can have your mapping done in this way so this can be a process adopted a mapping procedure that can be adopted for uh, the, the various courses now once the mapping is done this can be taken to that external domain group expert he can look at it now it should be something who, who has gone through the process of accreditation and you can always get some uh, uh, expert people who are in who actually goes on nba committees also and they can help you in uh, in uh, validating these all things so expert advice is very nice to be taken at such point of time and then finally you can freeze the mapping now with the help of this mapping you are going and, and the scores that are going to be uh, finally seen there you can check with what will be the attainment level now here is something which uh, is of again very important uh, nature that is developing the rubrics uh, by the domain groups they should develop the rubrics so identify the direct and the indirect assessment tools and you develop the rubrics particularly i am again emphasizing it for the major projects and also now the mini projects identify the direct assessment tool you develop the uh, rubrics for the project work and also the rubrics can be developed for the indirect attainment of the program outcomes through alumni feedback parents feedback employee feedback the student professional body activities like if you have some asme their activity you can make a rubrics what are the what are the learnings to the student what are the outcomes which are coming out of asme activities what are the outcomes coming out of the internship activities sae activities so the rubrics can be made for all of them you can make the rubrics for all of them something like this this is the rubric that is um, for a project work uh, just to have a small idea of it i've made this thing there can be many more ambient things which may not be seen here so they can be put here and again Uh, this rubric can be even uh, made more meaningful by adding some additional dimensions to it so if i look at the project work 
then in a project no these are the 12 outcomes the nv outcomes given you can add the specific pro, uh, outcomes of your program also pso's program specific outcomes also so this 12 by the nba the major concern and if you look at the project the project outcomes what i could figure out um, by my mind is in project there is a teamwork in project there is a literature survey in project there is topic selection there is uh, time management there is scope of improvement of the project if it is a project there is a scope of improvement at the time the project is done then uh, there is uh, participation uh, in the competitions out of this project then there are demonstrations also and there is also the report preparation for the project now all of these project outcomes maps or helps you in attaining the program outcome now program outcome is just engineering knowledge now if you look at the literature survey is gaining certain engineering knowledge he is doing certain topic selection he is trying to find out what are the gaps there and he is selecting a specific topic for him so uh, this maps project number 1 something that is demonstration so he is uh, demonstrating his certain skills so there may be so the program outcome number 3 designing and development of the solutions so maybe it is the the specific outcome map something program outcome number 9 individual and the teamwork you know this is the teamwork so uh, your program outcome number outcome number 9 says that your the graduate will learn to work individually and also in the teamwork so the project is giving a facility for a learner that is going to learn individually also in the teamwork also so uh, the the hardcore project making or the time of the presentation as he is presenting his own part so he is getting a learning individual at an individual level also at an uh, group level you can have team level also so you can have the rubrics made for all those indirect tools asna activities issue activities where they are no they are also into the uh, they are speaking with certain sponsors or some time to get some sponsorship for the event which they are planning so this all gives them a lot of learning the program so all 12 program outcomes which may not get mapped purely only through the courses can also get mapping can get mapping rather by the professional body activities mini project major projects and many more things there now here is something that is additionally done by the the domain groups what domain groups can do domain groups will set the target achievement because there there are the course outcomes isn't it and no doubt we will strive for a 100% achievement but definitely if we set a target because sometimes you know depending about the nature of the subject and the, the historical results of it you know uh, you need to set certain targets that at least i'll try to achieve this one to this extent this one to the, the outcome number 1 outcome number 2 to some 2.5 to 3 uh, a level of 3 and then this target levels are fixed up there so target levels can be fixed that we are planning to have this one and i gap can be identified thereafter that uh, this much is the gap remaining so at one point of time the target levels can be set then the gap analysis can be done by the domain group that these are your target levels or these are what these are all the achievements achievement level and this is what is the gap so for all the outcomes whatever is the gap is can be identified there by the domain group this should not be an individual's activity i suggest always that uh, the domain group can together work and do this thing in more meaningful way and then outline an action plan you implement in analyze the result uh, or the improvement achieved in the due course of time so whatever is there which has been left this all things should be your goal statements thereafter rather your goals thereafter <laughs> now just having uh moving little bit uh, ahead of it you know you have we have we are calculating the attainment level where we are giving him giving an 80 percent of contribution by the direct tools 20 percent of the contribution by the indirect tools now we are going to see about the missions mission statements you have got certain mission statements of yours 
and you are going to see that whether your mission statements are accomplished or not if it is a mission if it is a mission then it is uh, equally important to see that whether the mission is been achieved or not you cannot you cannot uh, do something like this you have uh, framed a mission you have said that this is our mission and you left it as it is you have to give attention on this that the mission which was set because mission statements are normally having along with it a timeline also it has got within itself a nature of timeline also so so you have to uh, go on always checking over what checking over whether your mission statements have been achieved or not so uh, as then you figure out your program outcomes has been attained to whatever level from all those data you will have to analyze that your mission 1 2 3 whatever are there are accomplished or not or missions are completed or not then definitely a mission completed a new mission begins a mission which is yet to complete will give you that gap which becomes your goal statement now so this way you are going to uh, have your mission statements verified hmm. achieved checked whether they are been achieved or not what happens is happens in this way that to the core is the vision to the core is the vision and vision will always keep that range in front of it where missions can always be kept on making right so for a vision statement what you are dealing with your core objectives and outcomes are first in the place which you are going to use to find out whether your object educational objectives and program outcomes have been achieved or not with this you are going to figure out what whether your mission statements are achieved or not and further you are going to see the gap which has been left there and you are going to make your goal statements there right goal setting so this goal setting you are going to, you will be working on the goal setting and the everything and everything there will move in this kind of way this is the pyramid which i have put the importance of them is like you you go you you go on finding out the attainment level the overall attainment the educational objectives achieved the mission achieved the vision achieved and when the uh, vision in fact you are an analyze are you on the right path or for the vision or not and then uh, you revise your vision and mission statements there you make your goal settings accordingly and go on the work ahead now uh, uh, something like what are the best practices uh, which the institutions should adopt to uh, look at or the institution should look at the best practices uh, that can be there by them in order to improve its quality standards in order to achieve the accreditations and all so here is one link which i have put if you click and on this link you directly go to a place where aict has uploaded the uh, best practices of various uh, uh, various institutions hmm. you will uh, see this there and this is very helpful you can uh, is this screen visible is this screen visible yes sir no the newer one the new one which i just brought uh, best practices in aict approved institutions is this visible no sir just a minute i'll try to make it visible but anyway it's not of so much importance there to be shown to all of you but uh, just the thing is that i want to tell you that uh, this this link or uh, you go to the uh, landing page of aict and uh, you can see the i uh, one icon there about the best practices you click and a pdf comes out and then aict has given for the premier institutions and good institutions what are the best practices followed by them you can study them and you can uh, go for a benchmarking and find out the gap that you have with them and you can establish certain best practices 
uh, for your institutions. But here, what uh, I have done something from my uh, perspective, that if any institution is looking for best practices, uh, how can be thought of for the institution? Just a minute. Just a second, please. Yeah, so uh, what I thought there was, how can institutions figure out the best practices for them? So categorically, categorically, if we are going to look at this topic, what could be the best practices? Then we will have to first of all find out what are the regular practices which are there in place? What are the regular things which are there in, in the place? Then we will have to find out why are we bothered about what are the best practices here? Why are we bothering about knowing what are the best practices? And further, we have to again see for what, what are they useful for? What will be the use of it? Now any, any educational institution look for primarily one thing that they should get good results. One. Second thing, as an as a uh, as an outcome, as, as a major outcome, so you know, that or this there are three important uh, aspects for which NBA looks in terms of your uh, graduates outcome. Outcome in the sense the graduate your the graduate of your institution should either have got what number one either he should get placed somewhere number two either he has uh, opted for certain higher studies or number three I, is he in the process of establishing his own start so out of these three things there should be there should be some students uh, a portion of student going for uh, placement you should have certain portion uh, for the higher studies and then the portion for their own activity. If there is a group of students in none of these three things, then it, it appears to be uh, a negative aspects for, for that undergraduate program. So categorically, these are the three things. Then we have to look from that point of view that what could be the best practices. At the same time, for an institution, for an educational institute, one has to also see that whatever are the resources with you, are those resources getting properly utilized or not? Because we, we, it is simply said that a resource not getting utilized is you know, misused. If a resource that you have is not used, it means that you are misusing the resource. So then you have a lot of resources, like you have your research lab, you have your library, you have your laboratories, uh, you have your workshop, so on and so, so forth. Are all of them getting used or not? That is one thing. Then you have your primary stakeholder as the student. You expect from the student that he is going to do, give his best. He is going to get the best results out of it. He is utilizing the primary person who is supposed to utilize it. And then again, you have the staff there. So looking at all these aspects, you have to establish certain practices. So what I have made, I have thought over it and after thinking over it, I have put them in a way that with this perspective, educational institutes can figure out the best practices that they are bringing there. But whatever I am presenting to you now, it is not the limited to that, that much of the content. Institutions can have far, far beyond it as the best practices. But then this is what a way I am looking at the best practices uh, in terms of the educational institutions. Though the topic of our, uh, today's session, the topic is best practices post this COVID pandemic. 
but uh, there is nothing like um, uh, best practices out of this uh, after this covid pandemic in terms of teaching learning of course uh, there are just reforms in terms of you are teaching in the physical classroom you are going on a virtual classroom there are online modes you are going to follow the social distancing and uh, uh, hundreds of time you are going to sanitize your hands and all but they are all the practices which are uh, the general practices which are the general practices which we all will be uh, taking care of which are going to be the must for all of us but in terms of uh, the educational deliveries the teaching learning process the general ac academic activities co curricular activities uh, extra curricular activities the things remain same isn't it and now then with all this thing the practices that can be uh, seen could be of this nature i uh, wanted to see that there uh, should the institution should see for what best practices from the motivational angle now something which are there at my institutions i have tried to bring it in front of you as an example but there can be many more uh, for other institutions also so best practices uh, in terms of the motivational practices that we give a best library user award to a student objective is that it will increase the utility of the library resources and it will enhance the, it will uh, lead to the knowledge enhancement and uh, the basis of the award is number of books issued within a year right and uh, we are planning even to have this thing done for the staff also now this can be modified from uh, from the perspective of various different institutions then uh, best practices best practice towards this motivation is that we also give a class topper award for the b students so first and the second ranker of the b are awarded so it will lead to a motivation to other undergraduate students that they will also think of getting this award so we uh, these awards are to be offered at the time when you have the mass gatherings uh, and then uh, that will be an acknowledgement to these students and will result into motivation <laughs> uh then uh, the best practice which is uh, more related with the alumni engagement you know nba or nac both are concerned so much on one very vital aspect is how about your alumni is your alumni connected with you or not so you have to bother about your alumni engagement or then using your having your alumni uh, you know actively participating into various different activities so you have an in a, a, a dedicated alumni portal college has an alumni portal which will facilitate the connection with the alumni and also utilize their services like invited talk they can help you in internships placements or you can also have a mentor alumni for your project group because you know your alumni is working at a different place different different place and he has got certain expertise you can always have a mentor alumni for a group where the group is doing certain activity and they are mentored by an expert now from there uh, in the recent days uh, our institution has come out with a robot which uh, can move from a place to place in a, uh, in a zone where the where the patients are quarantined and then the temperatures are to be taken the robot will move from a patient to an another patient and uh, will detect will take the temperature of the patient in that way so that could be one of the best practice so you have to look for the best practices which are related with the alumni engagement then you have to again see for the what are your best practices from which are student focused for students counseling so something like you have the class advisors for every class uh, which is for the reason to establish the positive communication with the students parents and educate the students on the institute policies and the code of conduct you also have uh, may have in terms of best practice like <coughs> counseling process through mentoring by the faculty and you have made some provision like there are 20 students assigned to one teacher and the teacher is the mentor to them and this mentor will have a regular meeting with them will uh, 
they won't have any kind of academic discussions will the mentor will definitely ask about their uh, uh, problems if they are facing any problems and uh, uh, talking with them in person and at times if he requires some professional counseling can make the arrangement of it the institution can have professional counselors linked with them and uh, uh, can help student in improving their morale then you uh, the institution can also look for or declaring these as their best practices which are more towards social responsibility than environment what i can see is that most of the institutions and the students at their place they are motivated somewhere as a young mind they are motivated to go and help uh, when there is some need in the many uh, at, at typical situation so there you the institution definitely has a kind of social wing and through that social wing the student goes and uh, uh, do some social activities which i have seen an example now a student go to the um, the places where uh, there are old age homes or they go to this the anath ashram and all and uh, they also go and during this pandemic many of the student groups were actively involved in supplying the foods to the to the uh, the laborers who were stuck at different places so uh, in terms of this this can be brought in, in term, uh, as the best practices but you know institutions should see for what see for uh, properly organizing them and there are provisions of it now as the students are exposed to the village life no this can be a practice that your students are exposed to the village life and they come to know the problems faced by the villager and this can be very well taken up by the initiative which is under mhrd which is the initiative of unnat bharat abhiyan and there the student the institute adopts certain villages they are given by the mhrd there and they go and see the there uh, the various aspects and they try to provide them the technological solutions during this period during the difficult period you can see and the students are assigned projects and the various different you know, many times you we see in our in, in the institutions there are blood donation camps and all they are also termed as the best practices there and uh, when there because uh, in an academic year we also go for certain celebrations so you have your annual festival there you have sports festival there and that is those are all the regular practices but something here in terms of best practices we can say that you are celebrating the regional language there and this regional language celebration is from the intention of understanding and appreciating the cultural values which are imbibed within it then you also take up the international women's day celebration to mark the social economic and cultural and political achievements of the of the women so uh, this could be highlighted as your best practices best practices can further be taken up that in terms of the student skill development so if the institution is engaged into coaching the students uh, for international languages they can institutions can highlight these as their best practices also if uh, these days some additional skill sets being developed in terms of coding and all then uh, that can also be highlighted as the, as the best practices at your place best practices uh, can also be uh, in the for the institution that institution has got a internal quality assurance cell this having within the institution is one of the best practice and having an active iqac cell is something i mean nothing better than that i personally feel an active iqac cell and out from this iqac cell then there are many initiatives happening but they can iqac cell can be engaged into internal documentation audit the academic audits so on and so forth today we have received a circular from university today morning we got a circular from a university uh which is again telling about the lockdown which has been extended to 31st july and during this period again there will be uh, work from home and uh, at your institute level there will be very limited attendance only for the reason that you are going to in, uh, make your e contents develop and the iqac activities this time in the circular iqac activity has all 
been highlighted by the university so i q having i q s in the place having i q s very active there is one of the best practice for any institution to have so these are this is the way where i wanted to uh, give an idea to all of you where you can figure out the best practices at your institution and uh, can further increase but or definitely they are not confined to only these many they can be and they can be significant more far far more than that there can be definitely very very nice practices even than this so this is what i wanted to say i think uh, now i thank you all for your listening now when there are physical modes of speaking you say patience listening but now this has put on your head that you have to listen it patiently only because there is no chance right now to have an interaction in between and towards the end we are going to interact with all of you so i thank uh, all the participants listening me i thank uh, all the organizers of this uh, session i thank uh, the technical team from for providing all that technical support to me for this session and i thank one and all for uh, for coming and joining here thank you so much i am now over to the host or who is going to take it up thank you so much i can close the screen sharing now Yeah, I have stopped the screen sharing. Uh, yes, sir. I am done from my side. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sanjay. Uh, Anju, ma'am. All right. Uh, Deshmukh, ma'am, will take it forward from here. hello am i audible yeah uh, thank you so much uh, dr sanjay bukade sir for such an informative session especially for discussing and many best practices that we can apply in our institute and uh, we can improve our process or we can achieve our uh, targets what we had decided for ourselves uh, now i'll request to all participants to ask question one by one first i'll request to pritam sir Pritam Gangwar, sir, to ask the question. Pritam, sir. Yeah. Hello. Pritam, sir, is there? Good uh, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, is he available, Pratim Gangwar, sir? Pratima Gangwar is there. Ah, uh, Pratima Gangwar. Right, Pratima, ma'am. If you can hear me, you can ask the question. Doctor Sanjay Bukade is here to answer all your queries. Hello, I think she is not audible. Uh, is that the second person who can uh, yeah. ask the question right now? Uh, sir, Abhilasha, ma'am, is there? If it is, uh, Abhilasha, ma'am. Uh, Abhilasha, uh, Dimedi, you can go ahead and ask your question, please. 
um thank you so much for giving me this uh, opportunity to ask the question um uh, uh, dr sanjay uh, sir yes. uh, it's very informative uh, it you. was very informative thank you, thank you. and uh, feel very idealistic approach uh, to teaching learning process whenever i uh, listen uh, all these uh, uh, lectures regarding teaching learning process uh but uh, practically uh, we don't uh, get uh, uh, the mapping result uh, with uh, uh, cos and pos and um, actually i uh, um, i had worked in uh, uh, vjti and there i had done this uh, mapping of uh, cos with pos so there uh, we use uh, used to do uh, like this i'm just cross checking with you um whatever syllabus is there so modules are there and units are there so that uh, we design the pos on the basis of that and then uh, course outcomes uh, uh, we design the questions uh, based on that and uh, um, when the result is out uh, uh, that time uh, uh, means on the basis of that result for example uh, unit 1 is there or 2 is there so co1 and uh, uh, po1 and po2 is there and uh, course outcome is uh, uh, means uh, the question based on that how many marks uh, on that unit uh, the student has got so that we given uh, co1 and co2 suppose and then uh, we are doing the mapping and uh, we are getting if suppose i am just asking this question if suppose we are getting 40 to 50 per percent uh, uh, mapping result then uh, uh, what to do what do you uh, suggest that what should be the result mapping result or yeah, what change I, should yeah, we yeah, should I, uh, I, bring yeah uh, i understand your question ma'am uh, in fact uh, i also have sometimes some discussion on the similar matter with vjti people about how they go with it and now here is like this that you have figured out the you know it's absolutely perfectly right what you have said that the procedure that you are adopting there that you make the question paper based you put the question as per the course outcome so that you can directly understand yes. that yes this is achieved or not so there were let us say uh, there is a course outcome that student is able to understand the uh, parallel circuits right able to students able to understand parallel circuit a 10 marks question let us say 10 students are there all of them have answered it correctly all of them has got 10 out of 10 total score is 100 it means your your outcome has been achieved perfectly well right but when you see that there is only 50% of attain 50% only being achieved right that five students could not make it properly only five could do it right is it like this are you, uh, you yes sir like uh, but what happens sometimes what happens uh, uh, some students uh, um, they choose that this unit we will study this unit we will not study it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that unit is not uh, up to the mark or they should not study uh, or yeah, something yeah, but yeah, they choose but, that but way but that that so, will always so remain if mapping a gap result there. we are not we are getting less then we cannot mm. say ki that is uh, the course outcome or uh, the pos are not correct or uh, but no but pos are, less are perfectly we are getting correct. less pos are perfectly correct what is happening here is because this is the flaw which is imbibed within it if he is giving given choice of six uh, two questions so definitely two of them which were concerned to some outcomes cannot be figured out from him and there will be always this missing link by them 100% it will always remain like as it is there but see we have to understand the attainment level calculation has got two aspects of it one if you go by the pure mathematics this 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 and another one is by a qualitative analysis when you do qualitative analysis it is not happening that this program outcome is not attended by any of the uh, any program outcome has not been addressed by any of the course outcome so there if you see it's fine that in 102 of in some 60 students some uh, some two questions uh, immaculately were not attended by all of them but it's all right still you can figure out the attainment level of the program outcomes 
on an average basis it won't be a pure and correct mathematics that this is like you, someone gets you know 10 questions five have been solved right 50 marks are given that 50 will be left as it is but taking for granted that whatever are been addressed the way the students have responded and way the figures have come to you you will have to declare your attainment level because they were not solved it was not solved by that student in spite of he being knowing it it will remain as a gap second thing it will remain uh... as a gap Uh, second thing uh, for this mapping uh, good mapping result we have to um, we have to set rubrics that is very important uh, yeah. Yeah. for uniformity because suppose uh, five batches are there and uh, different branches are there mechanical electrical uh, civil or uh, telecommunication uh, different branches are there and uh, five faculties are taking the same course for example i was taking applied chemistry five faculties were there for five batches mm -hmm. and uh, rubrics are not uh, means set uh, with uniformity then definitely that is affected in mapping because uh, mm -hmm. if uh, uh, if uh, certain batches are uh, approached properly with uh, with the questions that you have to prepare like this some teaching faculties are uh, 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 teaching uh, that way and some faculties are not Uh, directed uh, as per the rubrics so then that is affected so rubrics uh, is a very important right, uh, to You're set uh, right. with, with quantitative measurement mm. okay this these are the rubrics so these points are there keywords right, right. are there then these, mm. these are the marks yeah, so that is very important that is also lacking in the departments so that uh, that point uh, i just uh, mm -hmm. uh, mentioned you, here you, you are absolutely right madam what yeah. what uh, what is happening what happens many yeah. of the time is mm. uh, we are leaving it all up to the individual faculty if this mapping process is left up to the individual faculty the individual faculty will make his or her own rubrics and then if i am teaching chemistry someone else is teaching chemistry and then the rubrics will also differ no sir so that's that's i am telling you ki from department side rubrics uh, if same uh, different courses are uh, uh, under one uh, pos and uh, cos then uh, uh, rubrics should be from department side means the from hod to yes, all that faculties is that is for the I'm uniformity saying, i i yeah. got your point if you yes. remember in my presentation i have uh, advised on one thing as a helpful practice that there should be domain groups made domain groups means if there is mechanical here i gave an example mechanical engineering mechanical engineering within itself has got four important domains thermal sciences then the design engineering the manufacturing engineering and then the management courses and the social science subject so if you if you look at this first year of engineering it applied sciences and humanities you have got physics chemistry there can be a domain group of chemistry all the faculty members should sit together and look at what the objectives and outcomes are they can collectively with the discussion add more outcomes and objectives they can collectively together make a rubrics and then follow that rubric then there will be and definitely the uniformity yes and one point i want to raise from here because uh, uh, the course uh, outcomes uh, mm -hmm. uh, a teacher is owner of that and this is said uh, in this workshop i heard and it, it's very inspiring so each and every individual has the right and power to approach uh, department wise to higher authorities that this should be done and uh, for better uh, mapping result or something so that right should be used by individual teacher whether uh, she or he is on contract basis or uh, junior or uh, something so that right should be given that point mm, is there and uh, uh, one more point i want to mention here because all faculties are there and they should understand uh, that if electronics and communication uh, branch and uh, electronics uh, branch even computer uh, it uh, students they are of different level and if you are comparing with textile students or civil students or there uh, because you know that uh, how the on percentage basis uh, these uh, uh, admissions happen 
so on the basis of uh, that caliber their aptitude their uh, attitude so all should not be that pos and cos should not be uh, designed equally for all types of students because uh, three types of cognitive and affective and uh, uh, psycho uh, psycho motor three types of domains uh, you all have explained this is the third day of this explanation so that should be considered that that is one uh, point from my side what i think all right uh, thank you abhilasha ma'am for your wonderful questions and uh, sanjay so thank you so much we have mr thank ketan so veera uh, who wants to ask a question so uh, ketan veera please go ahead uh good afternoon sir namaskar sanjay sir namaskar. thank you so much for uh, valuable insights sir uh, i am with a management institute and at the institute level we develop certain certificate courses mm -hmm. and those are more pertaining for a better placement of the students so can these certificate courses be given more weightage than any of the course in the program or uh, it's not advisable so that's something which i would like to uh, uh, yeah i would require little clarification there by courses do you mean uh, a certif uh, uh, a different kind of program like you know like for example undergraduate program has got certain courses within it right, right. there are five courses in semester 1 5 in semester 2 and that right. makes the undergraduate program now what you are talking about are these the courses of certain program as a management program that maybe bms or uh, something so like that so this is regarding um, mba program so we have okay. a structured courses in the syllabus yes. so apart from what is being structured and given by university we also mm -hmm. develop some certificate courses for oh, more than fine. 30 fine. years mm -hmm. so that is more pertaining for a better placement so See, can but, they be uh, given more weightage that is my because they are more pertaining to our proper placement of the students and all but again the question is weightage in terms of what for what are you uh, putting a weight to them you know uh, see if there is a program for which you are going for an uh, accreditation or for some evaluation of from some quality award people for a program what is the program and what are the various courses under it will be primarily evaluated but additional thing which are being done by you can be brought into evaluation and can be brought into a place by showing that these are the effort in terms of improving the skill set or the knowledge domain of the student by giving them these additional activities something like when it happens in undergraduate program the we are teaching the students a structured syllabus what do you have in your mb then um, for certain achievements of the outcomes because there are outcomes there are objectives for that matter we have introduced what we have introduced uh, uh, a training program of what certain international language at our institute we are providing them the, the knowledge by hiring someone we are providing them the knowledge of uh, uh, japanese or uh, french or spanish now this is whole the additional effort which you, which we are putting there so that they map some of the thing now the additional courses which you are bringing will definitely be coming into the analysis by having certain weight which is going to map to some of the outcome they can help you in the attainment of your goals your mission statements largely which is now something that is beyond your course curriculum right, and the accreditation authorities appreciates a lot which is beyond the course which is beyond the syllabus some efforts which are beyond the syllabus are appreciated more where you are trying to achieve your objective this certainly has got its own standing and own, own importance but primarily when you are going to calculate the attainment levels which are program specific then for that program are what all courses they are to be seen as a direct attainment level thing then will come the indirect attainment where these all courses and 20% of its contribution will come there okay sir 
Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ketan, sir. And thank you, Sanjay, sir. Now, can I have a question from uh, Pratima, ma'am? Pratima, ma'am? Are you there? I think audio audio issue is there. Uh, but not audible. Deshmukh, ma'am? Uh. It's not Pratima, ma'am, is not online, I believe. Uh, she has left the conversation. Uh, we, okay. have, uh, we, have... More, we have one more person who wants to ask a question. That is Harsha Mishra. I will request Harsha to ask a question. And after this, we would have one more question round and then we will wind up the session. Right. Uh, hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. I'm audible. Yeah, you're audible. Please go ahead. Sir, it is related to uh, FE subjects. It is advisable and it is advised to us that uh, mapping of CO should be done with the lower POs only, not higher POs. So uh, it is uh, not possible that we can map the CO with uh, higher POs like uh, engineering but, uh, and society and all. But the query is, where is the higher and lower POs? Like uh, number all one. POs, all the POs are of equal importance. Yeah, yeah. But uh, actually, one summer college has gone for this and the accreditation and uh, the expert has come, he advised like the engineering education and second number. But like, suppose we want to map with the uh, uh, so, like engineering and society or ethics. So yeah. it can be, I think it, it should be. It is as simple as this, madam. Your question is very genuine if someone has told it in that way. Mapping, we are mapping just not to put the cross there. We have to give a thought. A thought process has to go. I, 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 uh, uh, which subject are you teaching, madam, by the way? Uh, applied chemistry, engineering chemistry. You are teaching engineering chemistry. Now, engineering chemistry has got certain role in engineering, right? Then definitely the program outcome has somewhere told about where engineering chemistry's role is going to come. And that view is going to definitely map. It is the mapping is purely based upon the subject and what it is addressing as in terms of outcome. Right. Okay. So uh, okay. it, it will uh, definitely get mapped where somewhere like uh, the engineering knowledge is there through chemistry because they are the fundamental subject. They are the basic sciences subject. So engineering knowledge, which is on the upper side of the pyramid, knowledge that I'm saying, yes. they're the basics for all this, right? You are further uh, dealing with the environment, right? There is an environment of sustainability, right? You applied yeah. chemistry will help mapping that particular outcome. Yes, like we have the subject like water, corrosion, they are directly related to uh, environment so problem. They are directly related to it. You have environment, you have sustainability, uh, yes. Everything there in place. So definitely, engineering chemistry is mapping something. We cannot anticipate that this subject will map some significant seven eight numbers of uh, program outcome. But yes. definitely, the program outcome has one of the outcome at least which your subject is mapping. So engineering chemistry, you can think of all those possibilities where you have mapping possible possibly but it is not li like that what i feel that under the, the first year courses they need not go for mapping of some higher or lower level because first of all i say that there is nothing like higher or lower level of uh, program outcome importance okay. of every single program outcome is equal of lifelong learning the first of lifelong learning is equally important to the first the last outcome lifelong learning 12th outcome is equally important to the first outcome that is engineering knowledge. Now, in engineering knowledge, also chemistry plays a role, right? Sustainability and environment, uh, they're also engineering chemistry plays a role. So it can be mapped. So there is nothing like you should not. Do. If the subject is, if the course is mapping that outcome, yes. you can go ahead. Okay. And another thing is like uh, branch wise, also mapping. Uh, might be different, like for computer. Yes, yes, yes. 100 yes. So Courses are different, mapping mm -hmm. will be different. Okay. It, mapping is related with the course. 
and undergraduate program one single undergraduate program undergraduate program of mechanical engineering will map program outcomes through the course outcomes which it has got okay so there can be there okay thank you sir thank you thank you hashama uh, now there is an another question from professor mohammad asif that he want to ask you sir that how to do mapping of institute level elective with ps this question comes from the youtube chat box pso program PSO. specific outcome yeah how elective? to do the mapping uh -huh. of I institute am, I, level I, elective i got the point i got the point uh see there is no different way of mapping in elective it is the, in the same way where the course uh, for a course you are doing it for the regular courses you are doing it so elective is to be mapped in the same uh, in the same way you are doing it you identify the contents of it you identify the outcomes of that particular subject and you ma map this course outcomes with the program outcomes it is as simple as what we are doing uh, with the regular courses Uh, sir when another one more question that uh, that comes from sahani athavni that he want to ask that how to decide levels of mapping in co to po mapping yes uh you will have this is something that is a qualitative analysis this is something that is qualitative analysis so the domain group when they are Focusing together, they will look. The domain group will look at what the course outcome is and what the program outcome is. And uh, if the course outcome is very strongly addressing the program outcome, then the level of mapping mapping can be said as on the higher side. If it is on the uh, mapping is loosely mapping, you can see it as a lower side. But there again, what I said that is what the what the reason is when I have told that there should be domain growth because. there will be otherwise lot of conflicts or lot of debate or maybe people may not accept when individual is going to do it i think this is strongly mapping you think this is not strongly mapping so if it was done individually you can raise a question over it but when you are in a domain group sitting together then everybody will put his own point that this is mapping strongly or this is mapping weakly and there will be a common consensus and then the domain group will uh title it that this is mapping strongly or this is mapping weakly it is up to that domain group and understanding of that domain group and approval of that domain group that this is strongly or moderately or lightly mapping and thereafter i, I have also said that such mapping should also be referred to some of the expert that this is what we have done if you have gone through this process and you know the things since you are the expert you know the things better what do you suggest any revision major minor major you have to go it like that sir there are many more questions uh, regarding this session but as a time constraint i'll request you to share the email id so people can communicate directly with you and you can answer them Where, in the and, chat box uh any not in a chat box you have an time constraint sir so we have to wound up the session and uh, personally yeah. on mail they can communicate with you we'll yeah. share your mail id with them yes please go ahead no problem sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you sir so with this uh, on the, i will deliver the vote of thanks and on the behalf of myself my mrinalini amul deshmukh i am an assistant professor in civil engineering department shri lr tiwari college of engineering biraro and on the behalf of shri lr tiwari college of engineering biraro i must mention a deep sense of appreciation to dr sanjay bukare sir for an excellent presentation on best practices for outcome based education in post covid 19 pandemic situation Uh, thank you sir for enlightening the importance of learning unlearn and relearn process in this literate world and uh, also putting a light on copo attainment mapping thank you for uh, resolving all the doubts regarding this copo attainment mapping pso mapping etc and for uh, again revising and introducing us with some more helpful practices on department level like forming and domain group course group etc to achieve our objectives and uh, course outcomes or uh, program outcomes etc so thank you so much for this discussion sir uh,
uh, we had learned a lot from you and uh, thank you so much for such the interactive interesting and meaningful session i think everybody had a benefit for it and those who want to ask more they um, uh, after this session also they interact with you uh, with this i would like uh, with my immense pleasure i would like to say thank you to our respected chairman sir shri lalan tiwari sir respected president shrimati kanti devi tiwari ma'am respected secretary rahul tiwari sir and respected joint secretary krishna tiwari ma'am for giving us a golden opportunity to conduct this aesthetic program and our beloved principal dr s ram reddy sir for encouraging us for this a special thanks to ist and aicte for certifying this program our sincere thanks to our dean of rnd dr anju arya ma'am for her continuous support and guidance my heartiest thanks to all my technical and core team members for making this session successful last but not the least obviously my all participants who turned up this session in a great number from all over india we yes, sir we have the participants from meghalaya part of the india uh, all the participants are requested to attempt the quiz and fill the feedback form without fail uh and the link is provided in your chat box both in your zoom chat box also so and kindly note that attendance will be considered from it only and the please link will be activated from 2 pm it's a humble request to all the participants that this tomorrow session will start sharp at 10:30 and to come and join the session prior 10 minutes it's an humble request to all and please do not forget to fill the feedback form and quiz attempt this thank you so much uh, sir we are you. Uh, so glad you. to you. you have here i thank everyone there i can see punit sir there on the video and uh, all the members there uh, thank you to anju uh, madam thank you anchor your especially your technical team they really have handled uh, everything well thanks a lot Thank you so my much. thanks Thank also. I extend my thanks to Ram Reddy sir also. And, uh, Thank you so much. Sir, on behalf of him. Thanks a lot. Thanks for calling. Thank you so Thank much. You. With Thanks this, so I much. declare the end uh, session as a ninety. Okay. End of the session.